going on everybody happy thursday is the day if you're watching it some other day happy whatever day it is i hope you guys are well it's a full moon today in capricorn so what that tells you if you know anything about the lunar cycle is that the sun is in cancer right now it's cancer season so shout out to the cancers shout out to my mom my brother my sister all y'all who um were born under the sun sign of the moon so we'll talk about what cancer is about and then we're going to talk about the new moon or the full moon energy Sometimes I feel like the metaphysical weatherman talking about the transits in the sky. So I already made a video yesterday, last night, about the moon and the aspects and things of that nature. But it was on TikTok, so you guys know you only have a minute. But for me, because I'm the shit, <laughs> they gave me three-minute videos. And that's still not enough time to talk about everything that's going on right now. So I'm getting the pre-workout ready. I'm going to the gym pretty soon. So it's going to be a good day. I got a bunch of chart readings today. I'm happy. Feeling good. Feeling great. Can y'all relate? <laughs> let's go. So let's talk about cancer because um, a lot of you guys, it may be your birthday or you might be a cancer. You might just have a planet falling in cancer. Regardless, if you are a cancer or you have those planets, you have cancer in your chart, friend. So if you don't have your chart, simplifiedastrology.com, get the chart for free and then look between Gemini and Leo and you're gonna find the Cancer constellation so even if there's no planets check the house position because you play out that energy in that part of your life please be aware of that right so check it out guys what is cancer you guys know astrology explains the cosmology of our universe better than a lot of things do because it's based on the actual solar system and astronomy and I don't know about y'all but I've been looking for truth my whole fucking life pardon my French even the French. So what's, I digress really quick. So sometimes we say pardon my French anytime we say something vulgar and that's a little bit disrespectful to the French people, but the French do have a word. I said, fuck in that, like that same phonetic, that's a homophone for the word seal, like a animal seal is how the French call it. So in this circumstance, I can say pardon my French because that is a French word, but um, what am I talking about? Oh yeah, the cosmological person. So basically, astrology is a really good way, the oldest, most tried and true way of knowing thyself. Y'all need, I don't wanna say need, cause I don't know what you need, but I needed astrology personally to make some sense out of this fucking life that I'm living. <laughs> you know, cause I couldn't find it in a lot of different things. Definitely not my um, upbringing religion, and then plenty of other religions I was hip hopping to and from to try to find some sense out of this world. I don't like to limit myself with a word because words are limiting by that very nature. I would say I would fall in omnism. People ask me, what do I believe? What, what is my religion? I believe in me. I don't have to limit myself, you know? But the cool thing is every culture in the freaking world practice some form of astrology. And if you don't believe me, read some books, man. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. I'm not making shit up, so yeah. Let's talk about the cosmological person because you guys have probably even seen on like a farmer's almanac or, um, you know, just random media that the zodiac signs correspond to body parts. So with the beginning of the zodiac wheel, spring equinox, that's Aries with the ram, the head, the I am, right ascension of meridian, ram, Taurus is the throat, Gemini is that first dual sign. So we deal with the lungs, the arms, the hands, the nervous system, electrical impulses to and from the brain. So what that brings you down with cancer, the fourth sign is the heart, the heart space, the heart center, the breast, the, uh, the womb, the stomach, the uterus, the, the feminine mother organs. You feel me? Like very important. And there's a couple ways to classify a zodiac sign. You can classify them in a million different ways and separate them into little boxes. But what I found the most useful distinctions to be and what I've put in my book, Simplified Astrology Volume 1, is element modality, um, duplicity, rulership, and then corresponding house. And we'll get into all of that. We'll just break it down more human as well. So you guys can start to um, understand, overstand, start to realize the cancer energy in your day-to-day -day life because you've been dealing with it for a minute. And even if you don't have the planet in the cancer sign, you're still cancer somewhere, some part of your life. And then when you meet other people with planets in the cancer constellation, when you relate to them, you play out that energy as well. Keep that in mind. And then also, because our earth just spins all the time and we're going through these transits like I'm about to talk about in a minute, you're going to play out these energies by default. You can't run and hide. The universe is pretty big. And this solar system, it takes a lot of moving parts. And I was going to say two to tango, but there's like at least 
<laughs> at least 10 moving parts if you turn off all the asteroids in your chart. I digress, let's get into it. So Cancer is a cardinal water sign, it's feminine. So what does this mean? The modality, cardinal, is the first modality. It's initiating, it creates. What do we create? We create emotion. That's water, feeling, vibration. So water and fire signs, these are right brain qualities. These people are inherently intuitive, inherently psychic by default. Everybody is psychic if you have a mind, I digress, but whenever you are a cancer sun, the sun is your conscious awareness. It's what you pay attention to. If you look at the sun in our solar system, everything you see is a result of the sun. So as above, so below, same way in your chart, your sun shows what you act on, what you pay attention to, where your awareness goes on a conscious level. So when you're paying attention to cardinal water, what you're doing is you're creating ways of dealing with the feelings, dealing with emotions, of being felt, being um, nurtured, cared for, things that you feel, we're creating ways to feel. And the thing about the feminine vibration, that duplicity that affects it, is that it knows that, let's talk about feminine energy, because a lot of times we'll just default to gender, okay? And it's, yes, gender is a hermetic concept, but when I, when I mention masculine and feminine energies, I'm talking about expression or receptivity, masculine, feminine. Masculine pushes out, feminine draws in. Cancer draws in because it's a feminine sign. So it's empathic by default. I'm telling you, cancers know. <laughs> you know cancers and they're crybabies, but so is every fire sign and water sign. So we draw on those feelings from the environment, the emotion, and then we act on it. So you catch a vibe, you catch a mood, and then you do something, you act moody. So that's the element modality and duplicity. Draw in with feminine and then create and initiate cardinal ways to deal with feelings and emotions. Water, okay? But now we have the planetary ruler. And the planetary ruler of Cancer is debatably not a planet because it's the moon. And that's the satellite of the Earth. So this is the thing that's going to be bright as hell in the sky tonight because it's a full moon in Capricorn. We have the satellite in the in the tides and it you know literally pulls the ocean gravitationally speaking you guys know scientifically the moon affects the water on the planet and because you are over 70 percent water the moon absolutely affects you so a lot of you guys have noticed you know maybe you don't sleep so well during the full moon maybe you're a little bit more irritable the emotions are more intense so going back to the cosmological person your moon sign, your moon in your solar system, AKA the system your soul made to incarnate here, your freaking body, your moon is your heart space and it's the heart chakra, it's the heart center. This is where you hold your cares. You guys ever heard those keywords to the um, zodiac belt? Like Aries says the I am, Taurus I have, I think with Gemini. Cancer says I care, it cares about shit. And that's the detriment and the gift of cancer is just caring too damn much about whatever it is, you know? I'm about to be geeked up off this, I'm telling you guys. I don't know what they put in pre-workout besides creatine, but man, that shit is gas. So that's the heart space, the heart center where you hold your cares and your um, love as well. You hold a lot of stuff in the heart for real. So cancers care and they have the reputation of just caring about shit and the moon affects the moods because they're ruled by the moon their moods change kind of often. It's very cyclical, very water-like. So sometimes a cancer may throw a feeling at you or throw some idea at you, initiate something on that cardinal energy. But once you like relate to it, <laughs> they might not even match that energy anymore because all they wanted to do was create that relativity. So as soon as they express that feeling, they've already kind of moved on to the next mood. So pay attention to that energy also. But the cool thing about cancer is it's a good, um, it's tenacious for sure. And it's good at like, holding on to care of things, but also it's very good at letting go too. So cancers don't really get as lost as the other water signs like Scorpio and Pisces sometimes. And then we're gonna talk about the corresponding house because this is really important and this is gonna maybe illustrate on a more personal level how cancers operate. Because if you guys don't know the astrological houses one through 12 and you start trying to study your astrological signs, you're missing a huge part of astrology because the houses one through 12 show you pardon me, different archetypes of life. So if you don't know how and where the astrology connects to your life, you're literally just spinning your wheels and trying to get entertainment or learn something genuinely and having trouble with it, guys. And that's been my biggest challenge before um, 
I took astrology to a professional level was trial and error, just figuring things out and missing pieces and not knowing what I'm doing or thinking I know what I'm doing because I'm learning it myself and then finding out very quickly I don't know what I'm talking about. And then, you know, the school of hard knocks. You learn, fail as fast as you can in any realm of reality because that's going to teach you uh, your next step. You know, failure is not failure as long as you don't give up, right? So the fourth house energy in anyone's chart deals with our home life and our um, security and our private life. So if you really think about it, the um, the fourth house energy, think about it, guys, because like the, the houses in your chart, the circle chart, they show spots in the sky, the space around the earth. So the fourth house is directly beno below your feet right now. It's below me and it's below you relative to your location. So this is where we're going to find the sun at midnight and we're going to find vice versa the moon would be roughly in the 10th house at midnight, you know, depending on your geography. So this part of the physical space and your life energetically is the part that's the most unseen and the most private and the most secure, comfortable. And if you want to take it through the first houses, first house is the ascendant and the personality, the characterology, everything, people, places, and things that's personal to you. Second house deals with self-preservation and values and money and earning potential and things that you need to sustain your life. Third house is your immediate environment, how you communicate. This is literally a third house thing. It does tie in my 11th house, I digress, still an air house. And then that fourth house is now that we've communicated with the environment, we go seek comfort. So this deals with things like your family, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your house that you live into, your um, security system, your inner securities, your insecurities, or the things that make you feel comfortable. This could be your bedroom. So. You guys know whenever you care about somebody, again, we're talking about the hard energy. You actually um, get close, you attach to them. You you even move them in the eighth house for, for some intents and purposes, share resource with them as well. But it's different because this isn't just like a regular relationship. Whenever people um, reach a different level of care in your life, you might invite them over into your house. You might invite them um, into your bedroom, you know, just as like, I could say it could be like a sneaky leak type of thing or it could be like a friend. Friends have been in your bedroom. I'd say unless you do everything out of your bedroom, you guys know what I'm talking about. Some people will fall in that fourth house energy because you care about them so much. They might not be blood relatives, but you call that person your family. You know, it's because of care. So whenever you have fourth house transits, planets aspecting that fourth house, you may see that energy play out in the people closest to you, the people that know what your bedroom looks like or your family members or something happens to your house or um, the emotional security that you deal with on some way, shape or form. So that's the cancer energy. It's the fourth house corresponding energy. Keep in mind guys, the houses are not the same thing as the zodiac signs, but the zodiac signs came out of those houses. So we can draw congruence and similarity, but we got to be able to put them apart too and separate the two. So we're going to talk about a couple of the aspects now that we've broken down the cancer energy. Again, check your chart, figure out what house that falls into so you don't get blindsided with this energy so again um the full moon any full moon is a sun moon opposition so our conscious awareness and our feelings are sort of out of place or right on track again this opposition energy is a 180 degree angle so the fastest way to get from a to b is a straight line that's the same thing we're talking about so you could be right on track or just feeling out of place make sure that you ride the wave and <laughs> deal with your emotions in a healthy way i do want to say with this being a full moon in a cardinal sign Cardinal signs are going to be hit a little bit harder with this energy. That's going to be Cancer, Libra, um, Capricorn, and then um, Aries. So Sun, Moon, or Ascendant, because both of, all three of those are very indicative of your personality. The rising sign, the Ascendant being, again, your actual personality and characteristics. The Sun sign being your awareness and action. And the Moon sign being your feelings and reactions. We've already talked about all these today. So... Just keep that in mind also, just so you know which side of the energy you're playing out. Because with the Capricorn moon, this is, I would call like emotionally intelligent moon sign, even though the moon is in detriment in Capricorn, because you know I'd rather be in Cancer where it's home, right? So the way we're going about reacting and responding to our emotions is very cut and dry and very austere sometimes. So if you are too much in that Libra moon energy, like trying to make it relatable and light, or you're too much in the Aries, making it too selfish, or you're in the Cancer moon energy, but just too lost in the feelings, people might see you as um, on the opposite side of energy or the 90 degree side of energy, respectively. You guys know what I'm talking about. So 
we have a lot of things to talk about and I'm not gonna talk about them all because I really wanna go to the gym now that that pre-workout's kicking in. But let's talk about um, the Uranus and Saturn square. So Uranus is 13 degrees Taurus and then we've got Saturn 12 degrees Aquarius. So that's a square, it's about an 89 degree angle, 90 degrees roughly, give or take. We've got your, I'm sorry, Saturn is retrograde. So basically, when any planet goes retrograde, we deal with the energy more, more, more personally, more internalized. So when Saturn, the reality planet, the restricting planet, reverses its direction, goes retrograde, we all deal with the energy of facing reality and being real with yourself. So when it comes down to Saturn and Aquarius, the restriction is in humanity. And you guys live on the planet too. Did you all see the global pandemic that we just... I don't want to say that we just got done with because we're still fighting it right now. And I was just kind of thinking, I said this to a friend earlier, but um, you guys know this time last year, we were like locked up in our houses and doing nothing and isolating. And a lot of people were scared out of their mind because they'd never been in a circumstance like that. So now that it's a year from that point, things are a little bit more mobile, more fluid. But that being said, it's a quadruple retrograde, so everything still feels kind of slow. I feel like we're feeling that aftershock. It's like a like a ripple in the pond effect. Like it still feels that way. Things are definitely kind of slow right now, and people are still dealing with those internalized evolution energies. Like whenever retrogrades come up, it really depends on which one, but that always gives you an opportunity for shadow work and realizing yourself, knowing thyself, and getting over yourself too, because I hate to break it to you, friend, but I do love to break it to you because <laughs> you're the cause of most of your problems, I'm telling you. And I say that because I know that I am too, okay? And that is the gift of accountability and responsibility that I'm handing to you. Take responsibility for your problems and don't assign blame or ownership to other people because the longer you wait for them and blame them, you're gonna be in the same damn position. And then all of a sudden, you're gonna realize, wow, that did nothing for you physically speaking, emotionally speaking, mentally speaking, because you just re-manifest the same exact position where you still haven't learned how to take responsibility. So take motherfucking responsibility for your life, man. It's your life. So what are you doing? <laughs> I digress. I love you all. I'm not trying to um, pick on anybody, but it's important energy. Yeah, because, you know, retrogrades go hard. So let's talk about Saturn retrograde, okay? Humanity is in some way restricted, so we need to lift the restrictions and we need to do something that's good for everybody. But what's really awesome, we're going to say awesome, because a lot of people are very biased when it comes to astrology, and that's dangerous, guys. <sighs> good judgment comes from poor decisions, but bad judgment creates poor decisions. So think about that. So whenever you look at your astrology and try to predict things and think it's all gonna be negative, your expectations in some way create your outcome. So if you expect everything in your astro astrological studies to be negative, you're gonna manifest that every freaking time and I don't want that for you. So when you freak out about a planet going retrograde, that's why you have such a shitty retrograde, my friend, because you think the planets are just beating the shit out of you. No, you're beating the shit out of you through mental self-sabotage. Get your shit together and stop using astrology to your detriment. I care about you and that's why I say this so angrily. If my Leo Mercury on Regulus sounds like I'm picking you apart and picking at you, no, I genuinely care about you. Because you know where my Cancer constellation is? It's the 11th house. I care about everybody, damn it. <laughs> Too much. Sometimes I put the world on my shoulder. I'm gonna see how much I can squat today. It's not the fucking world. I can't squat the world. So some of y'all try too hard to put everything on your shoulders and caring too damn much. And then sometimes you gotta cry it out in the car, you know? I'm kidding, but I'm not kidding because that hit, I can feel it in your stomach in the future. <laughs> so here's the thing, guys. A square is one of those angles that some astrologers who don't actually walk the walk are gonna tell you is bad. A square is a 90 degree angle, okay? And this connects two signs of different element, but same modality. So when we have Uranus and Taurus in Aquarius Saturn, this is fixed earth versus fixed air. So they're two fixed signs, two stubborn signs, two non-changing signs, fixating signs, whatever you want to call it, connecting diff different elements. So yeah, there is a lot of friction. Whenever you throw air on earth, you get a bunch of dust and the things like a tornado, whatever you want to call it, guys, use your imagination because these are metaphysical energies that manifest physically as well. So whenever you add those together, you have conflict of interest. But that being said, there is also 
something that each has to offer the other that the one does not have already. If I have earth, you got some air, we can make a trade, we can make a connection. And that connection is gonna be hard to make because it comes at such an abrupt shift of energy. But once we make that connection, we have something very valuable and a different understanding. This is the concept of squaring the circle, circling the square, chop away that round cube until it turns into a square. And then the logic becomes intuitively understood and vice versa. So I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. But the problem with <laughs> Uranus and Taurus is Uranus does not like to be in Taurus, guys. It's in the fall. It would rather be in Scorpio where it's exalted in a powerful, uplifted position. So Uranus deals with fast change. It's a step right after Saturn. It's the, it's the energy of altruism and the 11th house and Aquarius in general where we want to take our ideas, our lower Mercury and shift it to the higher Uranus where we say, what's the best thought to think? Can we liberate people with this thought? Can we change the parameter in a positive way so we can remove restriction, AKA Saturn? So whenever we do that, it's a lot harder to do that in Taurus because Taurus is fixed earth. It's comfortable. It's fixated on the things that are valuable, AKA money, career, business, status, food, indulgence, pleasure, all that Venus stuff because Venus rules Taurus, right? So we want to change that stuff because in a, rear, in a weird roundabout way, collectively, the things that once brought us security, stability, AKA Taurus, are now the things that are bringing us instability, lack of freedom, lack of originality, AKA Uranus or the, the, the lack of Uranus energy. So we all wanna create a fast change, but here's the problem, guys. We need to bridge that gap. So if you don't bridge the gap in a way that benefits humanity, helps everybody, helps the collective teamwork make the dream work, AKA Saturn in Uranus, or Saturn in Aquarius, it's gonna be hard for you to really enjoy the benefits of Uranus and Taurus, where you get to be in a fixated, stable position by your own uniquely and originally, and not have to really worry about waiting for your opportunity to come through other people. So. It does involve work, Saturn is work. We gotta work on the team, <laughs> you know? Cause you're my family, friend. If you're a human in a body watching a video or if you're a reptilian or whatever, I don't care, dude. If you're a spirit in a body, that means we some somehow came from the same energy. So learn how to appreciate it. So that's Saturn square Uranus. Let's talk about um, Venus opposing Pluto. So we've got Pluto. Pluto in late degree Capricorn, Venus in late degree Cancer. So that is an opposition as well. So again, the opposition, like we talked about with the full moon, is a bridge or a disconnect. It's the fastest way to get there, or it could be a really big blockage as far as getting there. So Venus is the sacral. It's our indulgence, our pleasure, what we do for fun or enjoyment. And then Pluto is a little bit more esoteric because it really depends on your level of understanding. And here's what I mean by that. If you're conscious of Pluto, you're doing your astrology, you're doing your work, Pluto manifests as evolution. And there's either the cataclysmic evolution that comes as a result of change and necessity where things are effed up and then you have to make a change. Or there's the subtle, second, non-resistant, slow change as a result of knowing better and doing better. So I always opt for the second option every single time because that cataclysmic evolution hurts like a bitch. You gotta transform things in your life so Pluto doesn't do it for you. Because every time Pluto does it for you, you're gonna wish that it didn't because you manifest a death and rebirth scenario, trial and tribulation, power control struggle, something like that. You guys know what I'm talking about. And the really important thing to know is that with Venus opposing Pluto right now, our indulgences and our pleasures are connected to evolution, okay? For better or for worse. <laughs> I left it at that in the TikTok, but let's expand that. So. Your indulgence, the things that bring you pleasure, may be directly aligned with your evolution and your growth. But that being said, it could also be the exact thing that is preventing your evolution at this very moment, where it could be your drugs or your bad habits or sex or um, whatever is bringing you pleasure is the thing that is stopping you from using the higher Mars because Pluto is the higher octave of Mars. So basically, if you're, if you're on the lower end of this energy, you're indulging in the, in the sacral and root. You're lost in the animalistic natures. You're lost in desire and passion and willpower and that Aries energy, the Mars energy. But what we wanna do is curb it very gently. Sometimes you really can't force your evolution. You gotta be kind of gentle and real with your spirit and your soul. Take that energy and be kind, be patient, and then cultivate it. You got to be gentle. You got to be nurturing. But whenever we learn self-discipline rather than self-suppression, we can intellectualize our animal instincts and then apply it through evolution, guys. 
And as a Chiron and Scorpio, I will tell you, it's a hard energy to work with, taking Mars and shifting it up to Pluto's vibration. But once we do it, watch everything fall into place for you and watch you suddenly know that you're doing the work, you're making the growth and you're getting to a position that's bringing you higher awareness. Your soul is thanking you because you're getting over being the animal. You're getting over the lower chakras. You're evolving past Mars, Venus, Mercury. That's the whole point of the outer planets, polarizing the inner planets, is to upgrade your body, your solar system. The soul, the system your soul made, right? We got a lot of things to talk about, so I'm gonna maybe, I don't even know what I'm gonna talk about now. So let's talk about the sun aspect. So we do have a sun aspect there's the sun trying jupiter and the jupiter is sextile the moon so basically these aspects the sextile and the trine they're both based on multiples of three it's harmony and synergy and things acting kind of easily so what we're able to see right now because the sun is what we see and then jupiter is how we learn we're able to see our growth a little bit better right now and this does deal with our spirit because these are both water signs feelings emotion intuition a lot of things are gonna be happening right now. So if your third eye hurts or whatever, it's normal. Drink a lot of water. Drink a lot, I didn't say that at the beginning, I probably should have said that to preface, but drink a lot of water because we're dealing with the full moon in general and we are high emotion, but we're in the sign of the moon. Circulate the water through your body so you can actually feel better and then do what you need to do. So there's a gift of seeing our growth a little bit better, AKA sunshine, Jupiter. Jupiter is retrograde, so there are past lessons resurfacing. Jupiter is that greater benefic, so it deals with generosity, expansion, learning, wisdom, the things that you already know for some reason. So a lot of revelations coming up whenever you get the message, hang up the phone because you don't want to be repeating the same message over and over and over again. And then with the um, moon trine Jupiter, that's the opportunity to react and respond to the learning as well. But also that being said, opportunities come in all shapes and sizes. So make sure that you <laughs> kind of overstand what's happening on a spiritual level in your life so you don't just react and respond to every opportunity that gets thrown your way because not everything's going to be um aligned with your highest good and only you are going to know so a lot of y'all who rock with me i do appreciate the support but some of y'all come to me with a lot of really weird questions that only you can answer and i appreciate you having that question and i'm deliberately not answering you because you got a good question, but I can't freaking answer it. You answer it yourself. So I hope I didn't answer all your questions today. I hope I made you ask a bunch more questions because that's the name of the game, man. You're on the path to your own gnosis. And I just rolled the astro dice real quick. That's sun and Sagittarius 12th house. So we're stepping in the mutable water and the mutable fire. Again, those right brain qualities. Trust your intuition. Go learn something. We're all trying to get a cosmological understanding in some way, shape, or form of what this world is and how to do it. What am I meant to do? I don't know, man. You're the one who came here. You're the one who decided you wanted to be on this planet. So you actually know what you need to do. And to wrap it up, the only way I found out how what I wanted to do based on anything logical, not intuitive, vibrational, has been through my astrology, been through my natal chart, been through my map. That's why... You guys will hear me talk about astrology till the day I die, and that's why I wrote a book. So if you guys benefited from this video, definitely drop a like. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. Get that book too if you need help with your astrology. I also made an astrology course. Link is in the bio. And I am raising my price for natal chart readings on Friday. So if you're watching this on Thursday, you gotta hop to it if you wanna save money. Because basically, I'm going to raise the price to 80 bucks tomorrow there's a kid on his scooter right next to me and that's still a really good deal guys you're not going to miss out on anything if you got to pay tomorrow because basically it's still less dollars than minutes guys in those natal chart readings you are going to get the natal chart and you are going to get a transit chart to show you the day that you book the reading the alignment's hitting you right now and then you get a whole window of opportunity to pick my brain and then have me teach you and meet you at your level of understanding and then give you as much as I physically can give you and mentally can give you. So if you are interested and intrigued, hit the link in my bio. There's over four pages of reviews. I cannot thank you guys enough for the support you've given me. It honestly means everything in the world to be able to give somebody something meaningful to their spirit. Because you guys already know, if you've watched me for a little bit, you know I was waiting tables at the beginning of this year and I was not happy. I was very depressed and despondent and upset because I knew there's more to my life. And now that I'm actually embodying that purpose, 
I cannot thank you guys enough for actually rocking with me and supporting me. Whew! And seeing my care with my Cancer in the 11th house. I love you guys. Enjoy the full moon energy. Enjoy Cancer season. I love y'all. Shout out to my mom. Bye, guys. Have a good day.